Hey guys, welcome back to the Swiss Watch Company YouTube channel. I am getting my studio here set up so I can push out more content to you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying what we're doing. Um, what we've got coming up next is a video all about regulation. Um, so we regulate all of our movements in-house and my brother Jeremy, our watchmaker for Swiss Watch Company, he walks through this whole process and he some of you may know Jeremy already from previous videos. He has a unique way of explaining things sometimes. He um, is sometimes too entertaining, I guess you could say. So I did the edits on this video, and I also want to put a quick disclaimer out. No matter what Jeremy says about turtlenecks being the SWC official attire, it is not true. We Obviously, you can see here, we, we, don't, we don't require turtlenecks. This is Jeremy's choice. He chooses to push it out like that. But I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you watch the video and uh, get your take on it. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Hello, everybody. It's Jeremy, the watchmaker of Swiss Watch Company. I'm here in my humble estate. I think you can say that. And we are going to be talking about the regulation. What I do with the watch after I set everything up. How I get the watch to go TikTok, basically, and make it sound and run well. Anywho, we're talking about this because I heard of how well everybody is satisfied with these things. Now, just so that everybody's aware, I am filming this by myself. That's why I'm not behind my um, watchmaker desk right now. Because usually I used to have Jacob or someone here filming for me and I was able to boss him around. One. Now I can really... <sighs> now this time I gotta do it myself. Which will be a good learning experience. Anywho, we're gonna be talking about regulating the watch. Um, so, here I have a bunker watch. Right here. Now, this is the fact. We sent... I, I sent you all the good ones, okay? You got all of them. This is a defective one. We don't sell defective stuff. We only sell the best of the stuff. And we're gonna be talking about the movement, how I can get it to where it has a good rate, to where hopefully you're not gaining too much time per day or losing time today, so that you don't have to adjust it that much. And I have a machine to do so. I have a machine that measures this so that I know how to adjust, do the fine adjustments. Sorry, I'm winding this real quick. It should be able to, how to do the fine adjustments to make sure that your watch runs smoothly. And as you can hear, I'm hoping it will be next to the audio. That's how it measures. If you put your watch next to your ear, do you hear that tick tock, tick tock? That's how the machine's gonna measure it. And I'm gonna explain how these things work, how we get such a good rate. My dad's very particular with these things. I take my time. Other companies won't take the time to regulate your watch this good. Usually they'll just wind up the watch. And if it's within, if it's not too much, if it's not crazy, like, oh, they're gonna notice, then they won't do anything because it's very time consuming. You have to measure a few positions. There are Three positions that I mainly look at, we measure five, but <laughs> three is what you want to look at. Three are very important, the ones that you're always using the whole time. That is when the watch is in this position, the watch is in this position, or the watch is in this position, facing down. Now, because your hands are mainly in those positions, Lots of other people, I mean, uh, we also will we'll measure this one with the crown facing up. I don't think it's needed because you're hardly ever in that position. And it's like we measure it to where hopefully it's between like minus four to like plus six. That's the range I'm looking for for each position. I'm trying to get it like in the range of a Kosk like a really good movement, which these aren't Kosks, but you can find a jest and then you can make it like a Kosk basically I, without doing the, the 24 hour test. I don't do that because it's way too much time. But what you do is I measure those three parts and yeah, 
this side and then this side aren't really needed because in order to get this side your arms like way over here and you got to keep your arm up like this on this side and most of the time you're, you're not in those positions and you had to be in those positions for quite a long time to make a difference with your right. So like, if you're like, I don't know, the Queen of England and you're waving all day like this, then yeah, like, I'd recommend like that day of the year, yeah, it'd be useful, I guess. Or, I don't know, other stuff. Uh, um, or if you're I, like, I don't know. I wouldn't worry about this position that much. Like, I don't know. There's many examples, like, I don't know, like, Beyonce, if, you, if you're dancing all day, like, all the single ladies, if you're doing that position, yeah, sure, it's important, but otherwise it's not. Forget about it. We're gonna look at those three positions that I just really clarified. This position, I gotta hold down, this position, and crown facing down, this position. Now, before we get started, quick question. Which movement runs better? This or this nice clock here with the pendulum? I believe that's how you say English pendulum. Now, I will give some hints. I've already given some hints and there's points to both sides. I'll maybe answer this after the after the video. Think about it once I keep on showing these uh <laughs> can't flip it works. Once I show these positions and I show you how I regulate it, we're gonna go to my watchmaking desk and I'm gonna show you how I do this, okay? Catch up, think about it, get the answer, we'll catch up to this. So here's the machine. It's called the Avici. And it's measuring right now. So right now I haven't adjusted anything. But, right here is going to be where the rate is at. See where the rate says, right here? In this position, we're about 14, 15 seconds per day. That's per day. We got a good amplitude of 316. And this is the beat error. This is just, you usually want this between 0, 0.0 is the best. And usually companies will have a tolerance of to 0. 6 or 0 0.8 but with these movements it usually stays at a good point so what i do when i measure these is i'll put it on like this and i'll check the rate and i'll do this i'll check the rate before i set everything to just on the movement itself but i just check it real quick to see if they're okay because it, it, it does change after you get the dial and hands. There's somewhat of a little influence in the ones that's in its case. So then I'll measure this one position. And I'm seeing that the, the rate is a bit fast. So I'm going to have to adjust that. But we're going to check out this position real quick. And what I'll do is I will measure um, each one of these three positions for one minute. Because if you do it really fast, you won't really know the difference. There's a lot of stuff going on in the movement itself that makes it so that these different positions tend or, or always or tend to have a different rate or amplitude. And so as we see here, the rate is plus 5, amplitude is 285. B error is 0 0.2. Now, we're going to go down. The rate's just gone down to plus 2. 2. We're going to go with the crown facing down. The rate's going up. The B error is 0 0.0. Very good. The amplitude is always around 300. Very good. Um, if the higher the amplitude, the better your rate 
tends to be uh, you have a better rate and it usually will make it so that the rate is a bit higher too it will be like so at the top with the with the amplitude is 315 we had a rate of 15 per 15 seconds per day and in these other places where the amplitude is a bit lower the rate tends to most likely be a bit lower so for this part as we can see we have this screw right here and it will always be in the middle between this plus right here and this minus right here now to do a fine adjustment if i just have to uh, change the rate within 30 seconds or usually 20 to 30 seconds i should be able to well, in total, 20 to 30 seconds. So usually if I go all the way up here to the right, I can get about minus 15. And if I go all the way up to the left, usually around plus 15 is the difference I can get on this. So we had a bit, in total, we are running a bit fast. So I'm gonna adjust this real quick. I got a new camera, by the way, well, a new phone so that I can do this. So I'm going to do a bit of a minus real quick. Oh, sorry about that. Just about, I would say about right there. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll look how that looks. We're gonna test it out. Meanwhile, I can explain a few other things. Just real quick, let's say I have the watch and it's running about 30 seconds too fast. Oh gee whiz, my stand's moving around. Oh boy, this stuff's falling over. Okay, excuse me. Let's say I have the watch and it's about 30 seconds, or let's say about 50 seconds too fast. And I gotta adjust it. Now what I'll do is this piece right here, I will move the whole thing over this way. So if I had to do minus, you move it left. If I have to do plus, you move it right. If the B error is not good, then I'll have to move this to this piece, either right or left. So that's how that works. Now, let's test it on the machine. After I just barely adjusted it, put it on there. Let's see what we end up getting. Try to hide the camera. So right here we have a plus two, which is plus three, okay, plus four. I'm gonna have to have this one up to be around, I would say maybe even higher, plus six. Okay, well, here we go, let's climb it up. See, so this is why you always measure, I always measure for at least one minute in each position. So this is plus eight right now. Now, if we recall, we had a bit, it was running a bit slower in one position. So if that is the case and I don't have time, to um, correct this problem, this issue that some watches have. Usually most movements won't have this big of a distance between each position. But this is why I try to also minimize it to the three most important positions because then you get the most stable rate. So right here, I'm about minus three. I think it's gonna go down maybe a tiny bit more. Well, it seems pretty stable. So right there, it's minus three. Now let's check out this one too, or minus four. It's also fine. Minus zero, plus zero. Okay, this position is perfect right now. Really good, plus one. Now, I have the top position a bit higher, but in total, you're not gonna have more than plus six per day, per, per six, plus six seconds per day. So this would be considered good. If I wanted to get it a lot better, I could adjust it. Most movements I have done of these have been a lot better than this one. So we're gonna do a quick test. I'm gonna show you how to do this if the if the rate is too far, too far, I just I spoke like Canadian. If the rate is too far, I'm American, so I can't do that. If the rate is too far from, um, to zero if it's like plus 50 or 100 or even like extreme i'm going to show you how i can do that 
and how I will correct it. So real quick, I'll show you how I'll adjust it to get it to where it's super far off. And then afterwards, I'll adjust it back. Okay, so if you remember correctly, this piece right here, oh, whoopsie, gotta be careful like that. This will have a influence on the rate. So I'm pushing it over right here. This is gonna make an extreme difference. It's gonna make it so that it runs a lot faster. Let's test it out real quick. Let's see how this looks. Now, check it out. This sucker's running fast. It's 212 seconds plus per day. So we got a good time. In a month, a lot of minutes will go by in advance and you'll have to regulate this and change it. If you're someone always that's late and wants a bit of a head time on things, then maybe it's a good idea, I don't know. Anywho, I wouldn't recommend it. So now, that's what happens if you move that piece over. And this is how I can regulate it and I can get it to the fine adjustments. So as I was saying earlier, if there's one position that is a bit, uh, that has like a 10 seconds, 10 to 20 seconds difference than the other position, I will use this tool right here. In this tool, there's a groove. Let's see if it'll focus. Maybe it'll focus like it. There's a little hole right there in there, see? And this, fits right on top of here, on the top of this piece right here. And if I turn it, so now it's in the groove. So now I just turn it a little tiny bit and the spiral ring will go this way, inwards or outwards in between these two pieces right here. And that can adjust that. So I hope you enjoyed this. There's one last tip before I close this out. As I was showing how I adjusted the rate to make it to go plus 212. To do this, you have to be very careful. Luckily, I'm here in Switzerland. I had a great friend back in the day when he was studying in Switzerland, taught me something huge. Something that changed this and made it super easy. Because just the tiniest adjustment when you're moving that little piece will add like 40 seconds. So you have to be really careful. He said this, <clears throat> An object in motion stays in motion until hit by a greater or equal force. My point with this is when you're pushing this and adjusting that piece, how to do it really uh, precise is you get your finger and you push towards you. If I want to go this direction, you push towards you and you bear, then you push against it. And this way, this will ensure that you're the most precise. You'll barely push anything on it. And that way, you can adjust it very, very precise by hand like this, if you can't use this, the screw to turn it. And that's how you do that. You get it like this, you push, and if you go the opposite direction, same thing. And that's how you do that. That's how you gotta be careful with that. That's the tip. Now, I thought about this during this, the question I asked at the beginning, please write down your comments if you think the clock runs better or if this movement runs better. I will give you the answer in the next episode. And I'm looking really forward to it. I actually have a lot of other colors of turtlenecks, the Swiss watch company attire, so I'll be ready to make more videos. Plus, Next video will be on, oh, I put my, on my um, things before I touch this movement. It's gonna be on the helicopter effect and how we fix this. Now, here's how the helicopter effect looks, just for a good tease, that is when the rotor spins like this, you see? Just like that. That's the helicopter effect. That's We're gonna look on how to fix that, okay? I can't wait. Please write down comment which one you think runs better, which one's more precise, and all your theories. I will give you an answer and my conclusion to which one's the best. Now. I really enjoyed doing this video. I can't wait to do another one. Please 
Give it a like if you enjoyed it. I really want to start doing more of this. It's good to show me if it's appreciated. And subscribe. It's a lot of fun. It's a great show. I'm trying it. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be fun. I'll, I'll see you guys later.